Here we go. Hi, everyone. Um, <laughs> I'm Chad Blevins. I'm an OpenStreetMap US member. Uh, I currently wor work on the Maps team at Meta. And um, I'm also a co-chair of the Pedestrian Working Group, OSM US Pedestrian Working Group. Um, so just a little background here. I don't know if anyone in the room is a, has participated in a working group for OSM US. All right, cool. Yeah, so just a little bit about what they are, uh, places to share ideas, meet, work with people, collaborate, um, and what they aren't. Uh, it's not a place to show up and start complaining, arguing about whose way of mapping pedestrians is right or wrong, right? Everyone's right. We just need to figure out uh, the best approach for um, each person, which is not always the easiest thing to do. Um, so as I said earlier, I'm the co-chair of the newest working group, which is the pedestrian working group. But here's a list of some of the other ones, just putting a plug in there uh, for these working groups. You can go to the link below, OSM, openstreetmap.us slash get involved, and you can sign up for the newsletters about the working groups if you would like to join one. And I assure you, after this presentation, you're gonna wanna join the pedestrian working group, every one of you. Um, so why did we launch this pedestrian working group? Honestly, um, I'm relatively new to the pedestrian mapping space. Uh, I've spent most of my career working internationally, you know, like mapping just like basic roads and buildings and things like that. But there is a hugely dedicated group of mappers here in the U.S. that are very passionate about pedestrian data. There's a lot of them in the room. Um, lots of presentations at State of the Map, lots of activity on the Slack channel. Um, there's also some legitimate resources here to coordinate, like uh, the, pro the program you just saw is uh, US Department of Transportation funding. They're dumping you know, tens of millions of dollars at this, right? And so it just makes sense to try and coordinate those types of resources. It's not something that the OSM community really has access to. So getting in there and trying to leverage that to benefit OSM, I think is a, it's a strong move. Um, along with state and local governments, right? There's a lot of them that are starting to open their eyes and be like, wow, our, uh, our sidewalks aren't mapped, you know? Um, and that's kind of the case in a lot of major U.S. cities. Like, the sidewalks aren't mapped. It's kind of remarkable. <laughs> Go to, like, your favorite big U.S. city or whatever, and you might be surprised. So uh, project coordination was a big one, too. This kind of, like, was one of the first things that struck me, I'm like, man, we need to r really get people together and coordinate on this. Uh, if you're familiar with the tasking manager, this is a snapshot from th three different versions. There's OpenStreetMap US maintains one, uh, Meta uh, maintains one, and um, University of Washington maintains one. There's probably a bunch of other ones out there, but these are just three examples, all of Brooklyn, New York, all of overlapping areas, all giving different mappers different instructions on what they want to see, Right, so you can see the problem here with, uh, with this picture. Um, you're not gonna get a consistent result that's gonna make everyone happy. And it's not gonna be a very good, clean, or routable network if everyone goes in there. And, and what was the term you said? You can kinda do what you want, right? Shoot from the hip. No. <coughs> um, and you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do this, right? Here's three, maybe the most common examples. Uh, you've got the sidewalk connectors, those little dangling things that drive some people crazy. They're extremely annoying to map, but they do add some fidelity to the database. Um, you've got a, a connector thing like this one in the middle, right? You know, it's, it, it gets the job done, and maybe this is more along the lines of the approach that you all are taking. Um, and then, you know, there's this direct connection where you're just connecting the crosswalk directly to the sidewalk. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, those little sections, like, I don't know, technically they're probably not crosswalks, but, you know, that's why we started the pedestrian working group. <laughs> um, so we, you know, I, I, I called Maggie, I'm like, hey, we need to start this working group. Um, what should we do? And like, let's get some goals together. So it's like, all right, well, let's just bring people together. That's an easy goal, right? Have a meeting, people show up. All right, check. Um, let's hear what, what folks are doing, right? Like, let's like, literally don't talk and just learn and hear about uh, experiences people have. Um, 
And yeah, we'll kind of go from there. So we had the first meeting, it was a tremendous success. A lot of people showed up and we're like, all right, well, let's do a community poll to try and get down to um, you know, the nuts and bolts of what we think we can actually accomplish in this first year. So very simple questions. <laughs> do you use OSM pedestrian data? I was actually surprised a lot of people don't. <laughs> but um, you know, affiliation, I think this is a pretty general representation of the OpenStreetMap community, right? You've got folks from all different backgrounds coming together. Uh, well, expertise, and then you could check more than one box here because we have lots of people that are very talented. Um, so that was a, a lot of different expertise, people with all kinds of backgrounds. Um, you know, if, if you were gonna participate, what, what would you bring to the table? What would you be most passionate about participating in and helping with? So you've got like, you know, some basic GIS people, data research and analysis, navigation and routing. Um, so like overall, it seems like we've got a pretty diverse group and backgrounds here, which is, um, I think that's pretty common amongst all the working groups and it's a good sign. If everyone was, you know, interested in one thing, it would be really, really difficult because you're not looking at that broad spectrum of um, what's possible. So then we had a comment section, um, and here's some of the comments that came through. We need to understand why we're doing this, who we're designing for. Um, ADA compliance was a big one. Um, you know, I know we can automate this mapping, but we still need humans. Yes, for humans. All right, we're not all <laughs> we're not all going to be obsolete tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> we need a workflow, right? We need to improve the workflow a little bit. You know, that task manager slide kind of describe that, and then, you know, navigable network is um, something that we should be striving for. And then some more comments were, you know, we need standards, we need tagging schemas, we need guidance, we need, you know, schemas, guidance, standards, tags, right? This is a very common theme that was popping up in everyone's comments, so uh, that was another thing that we're like, all right, we need to really dig in here and make sure that everyone's telling um, everyone's on the same page with, you know, how, how we should be doing this mapping. And then I guess this was our third call last month. Um, Jacob here, actually, at the end of the call, we're like, all right, well, what we need to do is brainstorm some ideas and put them down on paper. And we'll come up with some, like, we were talking about, like, a, a tiered approach. Oh, 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 let me back up a second. Um, Before we jumped into that, it was, uh, what, what would the priorities be for 2024? Um, and so these were, these were the three big priorities, tool improvement, editing guidance, tagging schema. Um, obviously, like editing guidance and tagging schema are very similar. You kind of need one with the other. So uh, you saw the comments related to tags and schema. So and we had this idea floating around of these different levels for, um, you know, brainstorming ideas of what these like different levels of sidewalk completeness would look like. Um, so yeah, Jacob put this document together, everyone started writing down their ideas, and uh, this is what we came up, up with. This is very preliminary. Don't beat me up if you don't like it, but come talk to me afterwards. Uh, so here we go. Level one, the most basic of basic for pedestrian mapping. You're just tagging your road, sidewalk, right, yes, no, um, and then you're adding the crosswalk points on the road, right? That's as basic as it gets. Um, it's good for some things, not for others. Level two. This is where you, and this is a lot easier and painless to map this way, um, but you do add, uh, lose a little fidelity around, right? You're just going in there for routing. This works really well, but you can see like this top crosswalk. Uh, it's not perfectly aligned with what's actually on the ground. You know, does that matter for routing? No. Does that matter for real life? Maybe. Um, is a good cartographic representation of what's on the ground? Not really. Um, but it can get the job done depending on what job you're trying to do. Level three. Okay, so this, uh, you know, requires a little bit more experience mapping, maybe some light surveying. Um, it doesn't look as pretty. You get all these like little squiggly, like this is not perfect geometry. Some people like everything would be 90 degrees and perfect, but you know what? Life is not 90 degrees and perfect. It's actually 100 degrees here and hot. 
But uh, you know, they're, they're, you're adding curves, so you can add the curve type there, adding all the, you know, some of the basic tags that go along with those features that you're mapping. Um, a little bit extra fidelity here, but it does introduce some problems with routing because you have all these little goofy segments in there and like the zigzag filters. I've heard that term used before where you kind of got to, you know, move around features to get to the crosswalk. Um, so that's level three. Level four, okay, so this is going to require maybe some light surveying, better satellite imagery. Um, Really, lo local knowledge is important. This is um, DuPont Circle in DC, if anyone's ever been there. It's a pretty complex area. All kinds of streets come together. There's all kinds of pedestrian stuff going on. There's a roadway that goes underneath right here. This thing in the center, it's a pedestrian area. It's the first time I've ever seen that. I don't know what that does to routing when you hit a pedestrian area. I guess you could just like run around wherever you want. But you know, you hit these lines come in and they stop there. So maybe we need to do something with that for routability. Um, but regardless, uh, that would be kind of like a level four where you're starting to add all those detailed tags um, and getting a, a pretty complete looking uh, database together. And then level five, <coughs> because I couldn't find a more complex area to show you, I went straight for the street level <laughs> imagery here. Um, but you know this, really requires surveying, street level imagery, very high quality data, uh, very knowledgeable you know, people and folks to do this. And that's where you can really get into the details and start adding like the curb cut types, tactile surface, pavement, uh, crosswalk signals. Um, there's a lot that goes into that that I'm not even that familiar with, with crosswalk signals and ADA compliance. So we're trying to get a uh, better handle on that, and luckily we do have some people in the working group who specialize in that, so we're going to lean on them a lot um, to make sure that it, by the time you do get to a, a more advanced map like this, um, that it's got all the bells and whistles that anyone could ever want with pedestrian mapping. So with that, I, uh, I pulled a couple of these examples from the Sidewalk channel on OSMUS Slack. If you are into pedestrian mapping, I highly recommend that you join that channel uh, for nothing else. Just, you know, it's uh, ent entertainment purposes when you see people like, really? <laughs> Here's a ramp cut with a utility pole and a fire hydrant. I've seen some of these things here in, in Utah, just uh, spending the taxpayer money. This goes into a flower bed, right? There's some of the zigzagging. Anyway, you get the picture. Um, it's a very, it's one of the most complex things that I've ever mapped in my life, sidewalks. I didn't think it would be that hard, but there's a lot of variables that go into it, a lot of different scenarios. So, yep, thanks for hearing me out. If you want to chat more, I'll be at the Meta booth or just find me somewhere around. Thanks.